A lot of people think the Mega Man 11 demo has input lag problems. They haven't tested it, but they're feeling something, and after the X Legacy Collection's miserable input lag, well, input lag became the scapegoat of the community for a bit. I'm Dan from Gigaboots, and I'm here to tell you that, surprisingly enough, the input lag really is not that bad. I've tested the Mega Man 11 demo's input lag on PS4 Pro, Xbox One X, and Switch, and I've got plenty of legacy data to compare it against from the X Legacy Collection and the X series. Look, I'll measure Mega Man 2's input latency when I go back to thoroughly test the Mega Man Legacy Collection, but for now I just want to concentrate on Mega Man 11 relative to the X Legacy Collection and the original releases of some of the X games. So let's do this! It's showtime! This input lag's getting crazy! Let's rock! So here's the X series, the X Legacy Collection, and the Mega Man 11 demo's input lag all in one chart. As you can see, Mega Man 11 is drastically better than the X Legacy Collection and is in fact really close to the input lag of the original X games. This is the case on the Xbox One and Switch, anyway. The PS4 Pro is much more latent than the other versions, which lines up with what we experienced with the X Legacy Collection. If you want a full breakdown of how that game stacks up across all the platforms, we have a link to that video in the description. What I'm now showing you is X8's original input lag on the PS2, compared to the X Legacy Collection version on all four platforms, and the Mega Man 11 demo on consoles. As you can see, there's some pretty strong correlation here between platforms and their respective input lags. There's clearly something wrong with the PS4. I don't know what Sony is doing over there, but they should look into fixing it. It's probably a mandatory triple buffer V-Sync as a part of the TRC, but I don't know for sure. I wonder how much of the infamous Street Fighter V 8 frames of lag is Sony's fault. More importantly though, check out the PC version of X8 without V-Sync enabled. That is amazingly more responsive than everything else on this chart. In fact, it's more responsive than X1 on native Super NES hardware. I'm hoping the strong correlation we see here between responsiveness and platforms means that we're going to see an insanely responsive version of Mega Man 11 on PC. Admittedly, you'll need to disable V-Sync and use a 1000Hz USB keyboard or arcade stick to get numbers like these, but it looks very promising. I'm really glad that Mega Man 11 is really responsive so far. I think Capcom's choice to use the NT Framework Engine made a lot of sense for this game, and they did a great job designing it to run well. I haven't noticed a single frame drop the whole time I've been playing the demo, but then again I haven't run my frame rate analysis tools to be sure. I feel like I would have noticed something if it was a recurring problem. I wonder if the Resident Evil engine, which powers Resident Evil 7 and the upcoming RE2 remake and Devil May Cry 5, has more intrinsic input lag than NT framework, or if the engine choice was sheerly due to the rendering pipeline and the maturity of the engine. It certainly has to be easier getting an NT framework game running on the Switch than RE engine game, which is why Resident Evil 7's port to the Switch isn't actually a port, it's just a Japan exclusive internet streaming game that uses the Switch to read inputs and decompress the video stream from the server that is actually running the game. One thing's for sure, Mega Man 11 is looking really promising just from the input lag angle, and I'm looking forward to playing the full release next month. If you enjoyed looking at these numbers and hearing my voice, or perhaps just want to expand the conversation around video games to include the ineffable importance of input lag, then please consider supporting Gigaboots on Patreon. We're going to make more videos like this going forward, and I'm currently working on an episode of Gigaboots Tech Lab, which attempts to convey the importance of input lag through various interesting means. Please like this video, subscribe, and be sure to share it with people. Oh, and if anyone is wondering why the game feels like it has input lag, even though it actually doesn't have that much, that either means you're using a USB controller on the Switch, which is just terrible for input lag, or you're just not used to how the new game feels. Just give it some time. Speedrun the demo a few dozen times and you'll feel right at home when the game comes out next month. This month's Gigavids were brought to you by our glorious executive producers, Vincent Povert, Nicholas Cameron, E. Lee Broyles, Brendan O'Sullivan, Trouncing Trogdor, Star Falcon, Spaceman Spiff, Belezra, Danny Richardson, Dryzart, and Wardonis. Thank you to all of our executive producers, and also these guys. 
head on over to patreon.com slash gigboots today so we can make more videos like this.